ਮੈਂ ਆ ਗਿਆ ਜਾ ਕੂ ਲਾ ਦਾ In September of 2019, the people of Isiozaka community in Imo State woke up to a horrific sighting of two exhumed caskets dumped seamlessly like trash in the middle of the village in the market square. The villagers were shocked and baffled at this sighting. And at first thought they thought this was a broken spot casket just dumped around. They thought it was empty. However, upon closer inspection, it was discovered that there were two human remains inside this casket that seemed to have been dug out of their grave and dumped by the roadside. This was termed the horrific sacrilege. In fact, one of the elders in that community said that in all his years of living, he has never seen or heard of such atrocity or such abomination being committed in that land. Who in their right senses would dig up two women who had been dead and buried from their grave and toss them out like tenants who had not paid rent? Who was behind this travesty? And why did they do this? Well, as horrific as the answer to this question may be, is nothing compared to what happened next. Because let me tell you, what the youth in the village did next was something even Hollywood would not have the balls to interpret in their movies. <laughs> So, it turned out that the two caskets had been dug out the previous night, before the 24th of September. It was in the early hours of the morning when villagers were going about their day that it was discovered. So, when it became public knowledge that two caskets belonging to two deceased women had been dumped along the streets in the community, it did not take long before the family of the deceased women were involved. The women were identified to be a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law. Monica and Maggie, who had died six years and four years prior to 2019. The mother-in-law herself was said to have died in 2016. And her daughter-in-law died a year or two after her. And for nearly six years or four years, these women had not been buried. They were only buried three weeks before the 24th when they were evacuated in September of 2019, which probably meant they were most likely buried around the first week of September 2019. And as it turned out, the deceased women belonged to a known family in the community known as the Anopome family. It was at this point that everyone knew who was obviously behind this travesty. Because as it turned out, the Anopome family were at war with another family, the Nayerugos. These two families were members of the community. They lived in the community. And it was said that they had been going at each other for nearly 10 years over a sixth plot of land. The Anopome family believed that the land belonged to them, inherited from their grandfathers. At the same time, the Nayerugos also believed the land belonged to them. It's unclear if these two families had maybe a shared great-grandfather or great-grandmother. But regardless of their history, it turns out that their family feud over this land was way deeper than it appeared. Because going into someone's grave to dig them up and kick them out seems a little too personal to me, if you ask me. The ironic thing about this story is that the case, that is the dispute of these two families fighting over this sixth plot of land, was in court. It was being deliberated in the court of law. They've been fighting outside, within their family, and they took the fight over the land to the courts. However, in the process of fighting this battle in court that sources believe to have spanned over 10 years, the Anopume family suffered a loss. That is the loss of the matriarchy in the family. But they could not bury her after she passed in 2016. They were hoping the law would be fast and give them the full rights to the land so that they can eventually now lay their loved one in the land. So in the process of waiting, they lost another member of the family. And they could not just keep piling up these bodies in the morgue because, I mean, come on, how long is it going to take? But rightly speaking, the Anopume family reached out to the court and got permission from the court to go ahead and bury their loved ones in that land. 
until the trial is complete and if eventually the land is awarded to the Inayerigo family, they may have to exhume their loved ones and take them to another place. I believe that was what the court intended. They just needed a place to keep these loved ones instead of allowing them be in a morgue. And for those who may be wondering, the Igbo culture are a group of people who believe to bring their loved ones home. It's not very common for them to bury loved ones in a public cemetery or in a public mausoleum. So it's very common with a lot of families that if a loved one is gone, especially if they have children and they have a family, they are to be buried in their land, in their home, just somewhere that belongs to them. So for a lot of people who would be like, you know, why did they have to wait 10 years or six years? They would have just kept them in the cemetery. It's not very practical for a lot of uh, Igbo people in Nigeria. So yes, that is why the Anapume family was willing to wait that long till they got access to the land so that they could lay their loved ones there. And when after they got a go ahead from the court, they did just that. However, the Inna Yerugo family heard about this and they were not happy. And so they too also went to the court to get an order, a keep off order from a court. It's not clear if they got it from the court, but they seem to have gotten it from somewhere because at this point they were really desperate. They did not want the um, Anopume family to bury anyone in the land because they believe it's theirs and they believe the case is still in court and until the case is settled, no one owns the land. So they got a keep off order and I guess it was now a battle of the orders. It's not clear when they got the order, if it was after the Anopume family had buried their loved one or if it was before or within or the same time. I would guess I would believe it's the same time because for the burial to have to take place, a lot of conversation and a lot of things would have happened for them to prepare. So I would assume the Inayerigo family got the keep off, stay off um, order from the court at the same time. But it was now a matter of which law to obey. And of course, I would not blame the Anopume family. This was urgent for them. And they went ahead and buried their loved ones, Monica and Margaret, in that land. Three weeks later, members of the Nairgo family hired diggers to go to the gravesite, dig up the grave, and toss these women out of it. After they did that, they disappeared. Because when the villagers discovered what had happened, when the villagers realized that the Nairgo family were the ones behind the digging of these two women from the grave, they were appalled. They were angry. They called the family members, and none of them were picking their calls. They went to their home. And there was nobody at home. The villagers marched to the home because this was a sacrilege. And so the youths turned the Nayerigo family home. They went in numbers, knowing that the Nayerigo were not around because clearly they knew what they had done. And they knew or probably predicted the reaction of the community. Their home was broken into and it was ransacked. A lot of valuables were stolen from their home. The angry youths really went in on them in their family home. It wasn't exactly scattered or broken or destroyed or, you know, burnt down like we would usually see. They just stole things. And as they left, they did one more thing. The two caskets of the two deceased women that had been dumped in the market square were transported and placed in the city room of the inner Yerugo family home. So, whenever they decide to come back, they would be met by the ghost of the two women whose grave they desecrated. Since this family were the ones who started this horrific show, it's only fair they too get a taste of the nightmare they created. <laughs> My brother. <laughs> 
traditional rulers, elders, and people to figure this out and realize that this war is only just literally hurting the people who had already passed. The Anopume family clearly did not want this. This was disrespectful to their loved ones. They couldn't continue playing this game of taking someone's body and throwing them away or keeping them in someone's house. And so all that was left to do now was to make peace because let's face it, the entire community was not on the inner Yerugo family side. And so they too needed to understand that peace was the way forward. Eventually, an agreement was made between the two families and it's not clear if the Nairigo took responsibility and admitted to how they messed up. But eventually, the Anapume family got the permission and the support of the entire village, including the court of law that they had already gotten from, to continue with the burial. And that was how the two women were returned back to their graves and reburied. This time, the only way that they would be exhumed again would be if the court awards them the land. However, if the court should give the land to the Inna Yerugo family, yeah, these two women may have to go another phase of resting in peace because like my people would say, double wahala for dead body. But this story to me is really horrible and very tragic. It's morbid. A lot of people at the time did take the side of the Inna Yerugo family, you know, putting themselves in their shoe. Like, why would the Anopume family bury their loved ones in a land that is still being disputed in a court of law? It just did not seem fair to them. However, it could easily be argued that they got permission from the court of law. They got permission from the law. They did not just go ahead out of stubbornness. They got a legal backing and they understood that it's just for the time being till whenever the dispute in the court is settled. Even the Anopume family knew that there is a chance that even after burying their loved ones there, in the future, when the case is settled, depending on who is favored, they may have to evacuate their loved ones from that land. However, they just did not expect it to happen three weeks after or out of rudeness or disrespectfully like the way the Ina Yerigo family did it. Also, the actions of the youths ransacking their home and taking the bodies of these women pretty much was extreme because it makes what is an already horrific situation into a total nightmare. At the same time, I guess it was the message the Nairigo family needed to know that what they did was messed up. So guys, let me know what you think about the story. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And you can also turn on notification button. So whenever there is a new video, you'll be the first to get notified.